You know, just having nice stuff's nice, isn't it? Good calipers. Hopefully there's not a dead pigeon in there. Right, this just nearly went quite disastrously. 295. Bobbins. Right, chaps, welcome to the first garage video in the new unit. In the new barn. The new barn. The corner hasn't been fixed yet, so I'm still a bit... Things are everywhere. I've not got my workbench up yet. Not got my ramp up. I've bought my own ramp. Look at this. Bought my own ramp. Yeah, buddy. This is a single phase conversion on a rotary. It's a proper rotary lift. It's about 25 years old, but it's all there. Me and Joe disassembled it the other night. That was an experience. These things, believe it or not, yeah, they've got loads of gravity in them. They're, they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty dense. Yeah, decent, decent workout getting that out. Yeah, I've got my own lift, which is going to go here somewhere. But what's going on with the E46 then? Well, we've got a track day tomorrow at Croft, and I booked this track day to test out loads of mods for the Nürburgring. Now, over the past 12 months, maybe even more, I've been collecting parts for this. I did think this year I'd get over to the Nürburgring quite a few times, but I've not been at all. But I am booked to go in October, so in about a month's time, this car will go back to the Nürburgring. So I've been collecting parts for that trip to make it, you know, a little bit better. If you've been watching a while, you know we went to the Nürburgring in 2018 in this car and the first time it was all pretty good it's all pretty standard full interior pretty much and had a few bits and pieces but yeah, it was pretty basic spec and then we went the second time in 2020 after removing some weight and uh, I can't remember what else we did oh, I put a harness in and, and little bits and bats but it was essentially the same car I still had the cup 2 tires I think I'd had 88R before so you know kind of road fast road tires but this time we're going with some proper semi-slicks. Now, I bought some new wheels. You saw that in the Silverstone video. They're already on the car. This was a test fit the other night. Uh, but the other things that we're doing today, we've got some fun boxes here. We'll start with a blue bar on the floor. That's a Turner Motorsport from, from the US of A. That's a 24mm, uh, I think, rear bar. The standard one's 21, I think, some, somewhere around that. But it's a thicker rear anti-roll bar. And then... I bought some good brakes, I bought these ages ago. Good calipers, AP obviously, daddy calipers. These are 9660 I think. Really, really nice calipers. I, I say I bought them a long time ago now. And just they've just been sat in a box, just chilling. But yeah, these are proper lightweight, six piston calipers. Anyway, today's like part one of ring preparation and then we've got a track day to test it. So we've got new wheels to go on. We've got the rear anti-roll bar to go on, and then we've got the brakes to go on. So that should keep us pretty busy for today. I've never built a brake kit before. It's absolute bare bones. The discs and everything need building up. Here's the discs, look. Big boys, there's a 368 by 32, I think, or maybe 36. Whereas the discs that are running now are 345. So slightly bigger, but obviously a much bigger caliper as well. So the minute the brake set up the Porsche Brembo four pots with the CSL front disc, standard rear brakes, RS29 pads all around. Um, yeah the brakes have been pretty good but you know the Porsche setup is better than the factory setup but it doesn't quite have the stopping power of uh, what these APs can deliver so you know I'm looking forward to it it's gonna be really good. Just having stickier tyres on as well is gonna be uh, a big difference, when we went to the Nürburgring last time, we had the Cup 2 staggered fitment with CSL size tyres at 235, 265. Now these tyres that I've got on now, they're 265 on the front, and 265, no, not 265 rear, no, 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 no. You know I don't like the square setups, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the, the square tyre setups. We've got a 265 on a 10J, and at the rear we've got an 11 inch wheel with a 295. 295. There you go, look. So we've got a good stagger again, 30mm stagger, pretty good on, on one of these. So we've got a 265 and a 295. <laughs> just going from, if it had kept 235 and 265 and just gone to Nankang, I'd have had so much more grip, but now we've gone much bigger tyres and the stickier compounds. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be flying, I think, hopefully. Anyway. I got some adjustable drop links as well. These are quite nice Turner ones. You can always tell you're buying some decent kit when it's got a, uh, a nipple on there for, for adding the grease. Can you see that? Focus you fuck. 
I don't know what the, the focus motor really likes in open palm. Maybe it thinks I'm going to slap it across the face or what, but yeah, look, nice little bleed nipple on there. Uh, grease, grease nipple. That's good, isn't it? So we're going to fit. Oh, we've got the rave tunes on as well. Obviously, we don't have access to a ramp, so we're going to do everything on the floor, kind of old school spec. Now, roll the car forward and jack it up from the slide a bit, and then jack up the rear so the rear's nice and relaxed. And get the old roll bar off and get the new one on. Job one. And then we will try and get the discs on. I've already got the wheels on just one side of the test fit. The fronts look like they're going to be more likely to scrub, if anything, but obviously these front arches, that's not rust, that's dirt. But obviously the other side's pretty rusty anyway, so we don't really care. Oh, I also hit a pigeon the other day when I was driving. So the fog light needs re relocating. Hopefully there's not a dead pigeon in there somewhere, I don't know, but... Yeah, we'll zoom. Oh, and of course, I've got the E46 t-shirt on, representing. Hmm. Okay, let's get going then. That's a, a lengthy, girthy intro. Are my intros too long? Should I just get on with it? Maybe I should just get on with it. I don't know, but surely you're all used to a big, girthy intro by now, and you're, I don't know. Maybe it's too long, maybe it's not. That's what she said. We need to do, we need to do a winter restoration on the rear, definitely. It's not looking good. Also the farm, where we are, the roads, uh, the road to get here is really bad. It's pure farm spec. It's one of the things that they're gonna fix. Um, but yeah, there's no way you can get a clean car in or out of here, so. Get used to the dirt. Obviously it works fine for me, it saves me a job. Old rear tyres. Two ninety five thirty is smaller than a two sixty five thirty five in height. But definitely a, a about thirty mil wider, I'd guess. So the drop links just in there. Look, bit of a pain in the ass. All that hardware is pretty new. Can you see the corrosion around here, though? Oh. Yeah, we'll have to uh, sort that out over winter. Only surface rust. All right, what I'm about to show you is going to upset quite a lot of you, but don't worry about it. We'll fix it. So I've just got the drop link connectors off. So now I'm just going to disconnect the rear bar, but look at the state of this. I mean, especially around where the plates were welded in, but just generally everywhere. Got some yeah, evidence of farm roadings going on here as well, but yeah, things are pretty corroded. This rear bar, these uh, drop link things where the bushes go, all of this was all powder coated black about two years ago. Drive shafts also looking pretty corroded. Hard race camber arms, they never last long in the UK, do they? Just look how much farm is on here now. That's a lot of farm, isn't it? And then the other bad thing is, so I'm just on about removing these bolts for the subframe and ooh, ooh, that is taking quite a bit of effort. Enough so that the old battery ratchet can't get it off itself. Boom. So four of these anyway, and then hopefully we can wiggle it off, but it's always a fun time, the rear anti roll bar on an E46. Yeah, it's way more difficult than what it needs to be, but I guess it is what it is. EC is also looking pretty hanging, man. Yeah. We've got some plans for this over winter. I think obviously there'll be plans for a lot of things over winter. See how much we actually get done this time, eh? Well, believe it or not, I managed to get the original anti roll bar off without disconnecting anything else but they're anti-roll bar, it's a bit of a faff. You kind of have to bend it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, double jointed is the word, but um, hoping putting the turner one on will be a bit easier. I've just been trying to find my verniers, I can't find them, but hopefully you can tell. Just visually, this one's a bit girthier. This is 24 mil, I think. I think this is 21, but somewhere around that. I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the standard roll bars in E46 is the bottom 
kind of bush, it's always a bitch to get on and get off. If you've ever changed one of these drop links, you'll know it's a bitch. I'm hoping, given that the um, turn is slightly different design with it being adjustable, I'm hoping that means um, it'll be easier to install, but I guess let's find out. Should I put it on the full stiff? I think I'll put it on the full stiff. Yeah, we'll put it on full stiff, why not? I think the front's on full stiff. If not, we'll double check and maybe put it also on full stiff. The reason I'm doing roll bars, by the way, is Nürburgring. If you're doing it on the cheap, which obviously I was because I've got the, the basic BC coilovers, soft springs but stiff roll bars should be ideal for the Nürburgring. You don't want it crashy, but you don't want too much roll in the corners, right? So soft springs and juicy roll bars. So when this came up for sale, I thought, yeah, I'll have that. The drop links are adjustable. Obviously, we don't have any way of tuning the car afterwards, alignment-wise. That'll have to come in the future. So just for now, I'm going to set them roughly to what the standard ones were, and that should be all right. We've got a spherical uh, rose joint at the top as well on these drop links, which is quite nice. But yeah, I'll just do it roughly to that right height. Obviously, the idea of being um, adjustable is to try and make sure there's no preload on the roll bar when the car's sat on a flat, but yeah, for, for what we're doing now, we're just going to bang them on, I'll just measure it roughly the same size and then lock it off and hopefully she'll be alright. I just got done assembling the turner bar. Just want to say it's it's really nice, you know, just having nice stuff's nice, isn't it? I just thought maybe this would be interesting to see how I wiggled it in. Okay. Yeah. So after all that, the drop links are gonna have to come off anyway. Because the fancy bleed nipple is on as a drive shaft that way. So I'm gonna have to do a 180. But yeah, there we go. It's pretty much on there. Oh, yeah. Why do these Chinese torches always have weird party modes on them? <laughs> like when a Berlin nightclub on Hitman 3. Alright, the roll bar is on. That somehow took two hours to do. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. So, we're going to move on to the APs. Which means a bit of DIY first. Obviously we need to lift the front up. APs, what's the other thing we need to do today? Roll bar wheels, mm. roll bar brakes, fog light fix. There was something else, wasn't there? Oh, it can't have been important. Droop though. <laughs> All right, just got everything laid out. In lieu of a workbench, we're gonna be working on a bit of chipboard here, but this is all new to me. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm gonna take my time. Two-piece discs. The M3 has two-piece discs from the factory, but they're not quite two-piece, you can't separate the bell from the disc but you know they're as good as two piece i'll show you when it's off shall i but these are a true two piece so when the discs need replacing we replace the discs and retain the bells so how do they go together well there's this kit here I think they call them bobbins yeah bobbin kits so yeah okay real stuff right so the pads, like I say, is a Project Mew. The pads and the discs are used, right? Are used. Now, if you know how much these calipers cost, you'll know that that's maybe not a bad thing because it keeps the cost down a bit and they should still be solid. Uh, C-hook discs, yeah. Like I say, they're 368 by, I can't remember if it's 32 or, or 36, but 
big old discs, and obviously we've got the bell. Uh, imagine that must bolt from the inside, I think. How's it go? There's a diagram here, look, so it must go like that, right? No, that doesn't look right. Like that? That doesn't look right either, does it? Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna have to study this and then I'll show you what it looks like. Anyway, all the hardware, look, this is the hardware to mount the calipers to the knuckles, new braided hoses, and obviously the calipers themselves, adapter brackets. Yeah, let me go find my Loctite and then I'll get one of the discs built up and show you how it goes. It's all new to me as well. It doesn't actually mention using any sealant, any Loctite or anything. Oh shit. It doesn't actually mention it on the destructions that I can see, but I think it's probably a good idea, right? I mean, I asked Kevin about it. Kevin's done this before. He was very specific about using a certain grade of Loctite even. But I mean, these are definitely locking nuts anyway. But yeah, I think what I'll do is just put a slither in th of Loctite on them. So this stuff I've got, nut grade, yeah. And then when we're done, we're talking up to 40 newton meters, crisscross pattern, and then we'll put a dropper die cam on them, and then we'll call ourselves race car engineers, yeah. Engineer spelled E N J I N E A R, engine ear, engineer, yeah. Try and keep you on there, I don't know if it'll work or not. Yeah, I'm fucking the GoPro. Right, disassembled. Everything else should be smooth sailing. I reckon. First job, old setup off. Pardon me. Need to find a way to press my brake pedal down a little bit. This has gone a, a little bit mighty car mods now, hasn't it? So let's just. Uh, uh, is it that one? Yeah, this is good. Well, this is going so far, not so good. Can't get the disc retaining screws out. You have to uh, come to a T40, I think it is. The top one just about came out, that was tight, but this one just rounded straight out, so. These are OEM CSL discs, or sizes anyway. It would be a 16 or an 18 probably because BMW like to get the most out of their toolboxes so every size matters. Right this just nearly went quite disastrously but I think we'll be all right so I'm doing the brakes on the front left still you see the, the disc and everything's off and we've got new lines remember so I went to take the line off and negligently thought that this line would just come straight off given that I replaced it only a couple of years ago. That's a BMW line, it was all pre-made, but the fittings and everything, I just had to bend it. But no, it started um, doing the old 
they're not stuck to the line thing and twisting the line. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And, you know, cleaned it up, heated it up, and it was still kind of doing the same. It looks like, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like the paint's come off or whatever they've used to cover. I can give you a look. So whatever they've used to kind of cover the line, you know, it's not a copper line, it's a steel line with something over the top of it, like a protection stuff. It looks like that's dropped down into the threads, locking it all together, which is lovely, isn't it? But the good news is the thread type on the hose seems to be the same as the AP, so we'll just use my existing braided lines. There's nothing wrong with them, so yeah, we'll just do that, shall we? Ta-da! Still need to bleed them, obviously. I still need to do the other side. I'm just gonna try and do that roll bar while I'm here. I seem to remember it being a bit of a bitch before, but uh, if this side's a bitch, then we'll just leave it. But yeah, brakes are on. It was really simple, really. Really simple, really. Yeah, I didn't have any complaints, really. Once I got my head around how the bells went together, everything else just, yeah, nice and simple. All talked up to spec as well, of course. All talked up to spec. I'm going to try and find a garage on the way in tomorrow. I'll blast all this shit off, I think. I don't want to be taking that on the racetrack, do I? Hey? But yeah, I could really do with uh, this roll bar being on the stiffest setting, so fingers crossed it'll be nice to me and let me get it off. But let's find out. Nope, techno, techno. That actually wasn't a bitch. Can you believe it? I had to put some uh, pressure on it with the old pry bar, but yeah, nice, 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 nice. So hopefully that line's nipped back up all right. Still a bit loose in its cage, but you know, the hose is tight, so hopefully it don't leak. It's not like obviously bent or anything. And I could feel it wasn't gonna go so well. That's why I backed off and luckily this hose fit so we didn't have to get any savage or anything. So yeah, look, just that hose. It's a banjo fitting from AP, but yeah, the, the line goes straight in. So we're good, just an M10 uh, by one, I think, Fred. Anyway, on to the other side. Chaps, it's getting quite late, you know. I've been here dossing around for ages as per usual. Giving myself loads of room on this side to get it done. Someone keeps parking this, this white car in places, bastards, with its shiny white underside. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll skip ahead about an hour and hopefully this will all be done, so I'll see you there. Right, we're a couple of hours on. I've been having not such a good time. So what happened? Well, everything went really well and so they got to the bleeding phase. And then this caliper was just pissing out fluid from where the union goes in for the brake hose. Remember, I didn't change the brake hoses because of, uh, yeah, it was all stuck to the pipe on this side. They didn't even attempt the other side. So why was it doing that then? Well, if we look at the new brake hose here, right? It's a banjo fitting, right? Yeah, banjo fitting, yeah, okay. And where's the bolt? Boltings is here. Okay. So here's the bolt. So fluid goes up. The, um, I was gonna say something rude there, but I'm sure you can work out. And then uh, comes out the, the banjo there, goes up the line, yeah? Well, I wanted to use the Porsche kit, which was already attached to make myself go on a bit easier. Now, where does fluid go in this one? Well, fluid just goes in the top. That's it. So I thought that'd be fine, and it would be fine, because it's just two different ways of doing the same thing. So when that happened, obviously it wasn't able to seal for whatever reason. I, th I thought it you know, should just bottom out and seal, because they, they weren't all the way in on the Porsche calipers, but yeah, it just, just wasn't sealing. And I, I did it you know, as righty-tighty as I dare, and it was still pissing out fluid, as you can see. It's made a bit of a mess. Yeah, less than ideal. So what did I do? I, I, I wiggled the old hose off. Um, dodgy spec and I thought it might not be so bad because this union is free balling so as long as I can nip it up properly as long as I can tighten it up we don't actually need the top one to be free balling just the same you know, if this was a, an OEM car that would be fixed to the line and you'd have to turn the line with it but because that free balls we can get away with it so I'm gonna do the other side the same and yeah just hope that it works otherwise yeah what we're gonna do <laughs> MR2. All right, we're done, I think. It's bled up, I bled it up again. 
Pedal feels all right. I've not started the car yet. I'm gonna go for a little test drive, just see how it is. But yeah, seems okay. So a bit sketchy at the end, sketchy for sure. Sketchiness, our us. But the hoses seem good, seem tight, seem happy. Um, to be young, foolish and happy, I guess. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right for sure. So we've got roll bar on, we've got the brakes on, fixed the fog light and the new wheels will fit. They'll all be good. It's gonna be a good day tomorrow, of course. So quick tidy up. Made a right mess. Quick tidy up and then quick little test drive. And hopefully I'll tell you everything is A-OK. -okay. A-P-OK. -okay. Oh, I need to peel these stickers off as well. Of course. Yeah, I just got back from a test drive. It's so good. <laughs> wow. I never felt brakes like it on such a big car. I guess it's quite similar to the Dark Side TT, but I would say even this felt like it had more more bite anyway, I don't know, I don't know what's going on there. But I mean, I was only going from like, you know, legal speeds, just to try and, you know, give them some, to get that pad material and that disc material, just be mates for a little bit and then settle down tonight. So they'll hopefully be nice and fresh for tomorrow. Bloody farm life. Obviously didn't get a chance to test the roll bars or anything, but we'll see how they get on tomorrow with the, the stickier tires. But yeah, all I need to do now is get this loaded up and yeah, ditch it. Come back tomorrow in the morning and go up to Croft. But yeah, feels good. So it took a while, but we got there and it was worth it. Interesting, it's the back brakes seem to be doing more ting tongs than the front brakes are just chilling. Hopefully I've got the disc the right way around. I think I have. I looked at the guide, just about. Took the sticker off. All good. Now how to get four 18 inch wheels and a trolley jack in it somewhere. Yeah, easy. Need to try and find a car wash in the morning as well to get rid of all this. Ugh, fucking bastards. It's not the pigeons, that, there's some little birds, but yeah, the pigeons make their own mess. You know, the old tenants of this building haven't quite been evicted yet. They're being a bit stroppy, so we'll get there. All right, we're all done. So to end the video, can you fit four 18-inch wheels and tires into an M3? You should be able to. It's got no interior, right? But the cage makes things a little bit difficult. So we've got everything done that we wanted to do on the car. That's good, brakes are on, roll bars are on. So the wheels are very promiscuous, but just about in there. They would have fitted really well, like maybe even three of them would have gone here. Um, long transversely? That's the right word, isn't it? But the door cards are so bloody big. Why have I got door cards? Yeah, I need to get rid of them. And then the boot, mm, this might not even open. Okay, it did open. But in order to get it to close, I need to push that up and then quickly. Uh, it won't close as it is, but if you're very fast, it'll close. Yeah, there was a mint of this car when I got it, do you remember? Absolute minter. It's only had three owners. State of it. But we've got the stopping power, we've got the grips in the car, and we've got the roll bars. So tomorrow should be a good day. So next video, Croft Track Day, we'll be testing out the M3 mods. Hopefully at the same time doing a few reviews on some cars. Nothing confirmed on that front yet, but the main focus obviously, see how this is. And then like I say, we've got another round of uh, ring preparation mods to come. CSL airbox conversion and some better coilovers, but we'll see how we get on with the BCs tomorrow. Maybe them uh, extra grips on the roll bars might just be all right. It felt pretty good on the road, but it normally always does. So remember, nine inch 235, 10 inch 265 is what we had for the past two years. I think that's what we've had. And we're going to 10 inch 265 and 11 inch 295. But we're going from Cup 2 to AR1, which is a decent jump in traction. So 
I'll see you at Croft. It's going to be a good day. Oh, and don't forget E46 t-shirts. Hmm. Look, it's blue like the car. You don't have to be blue though, you can get them in various different colours. Various. No dirt on your one though, yours will be clean probably.